Here to tell us more about new initiatives to help more students like Kelsey achieve success is Peggy McAvoy, Assistant Superintendent for Operations for Seattle Public Schools. Welcome, Peggy. Good to have you here. Well, let's talk uh, about Kelsey and her story and students like her. I'd love to say that Kelsey is alone, but she's not. Nationally, we know that about seven and a half million students miss more than a month each school year. And I've, I have a background as a school nurse, and we know that that's due to a variety of reasons, health-related reasons and other types of hardships. The challenge here seems to be so great. Yeah. How do we really deal with this? Well, we have to start by looking at the data. And we do student surveys to find out how they're feeling about going to school um, and what might be in the way and what type of supports might be helpful to them. We also look at outcome data, and by that I mean we look at uh, what we call the ABCs, their attendance, their behaviors in school, related usually to suspensions and expulsions, and then their course completions, or are they advancing and getting credits for the courses that they're taking. Data, then, is very important in being able to track the students mm -hmm. so that you know how to deal with them. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it, it causes us to look at what type of programs will help our students be successful. And we need to look at that data and break it apart so that we can see what's working for, for instance, our minority students. Um, we know some programs that might work for um, one set of students might not work for another set of students. We also look to see um, what's causing our students not to graduate and to drop out. And um, when we've analyzed that data nationally, we find that students fall into three major categories. Um, we know that students who weren't successful in middle school need some additional support as we move them into high school. We also know that some students, no matter how much we give support we give them as we transition them to high school, may not be successful. So we have uh, a category of students that we call the overage undercredited. That's the 17-year-old student that has got freshman credits. And then we also see another large body of students that get very close to graduation. Um, they may be uh, a senior and one or two credits short, and they're watching all of their uh, friends graduate, and they're not quite there, so they give up and sort of disengage and drop out. Why do kids of color tend to have such a huge problem with mm -hmm. not staying in the school, attendance issues, and mm -hmm. then not graduating? Well, we've really looked at that, and, and we wanted to be able to provide some additional supports. And there's a variety of reasons, as many as there is different students. Sometimes it has to do with economics. Sometimes it has to do with uh, the additional stressors that some of our students have uh, undergone. So we're trying to provide additional targeted supports related to that. Now, in the case of Kelsey, uh, she has received a lot of support. Mm -hmm. They're in school, particularly from a school counselor who's mm -hmm. also then reached out to her mother. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that and how mm -hmm. important that is. Well, that's our stay in school counselors and they are wonderful. They come in, find which students are having problems with attendance and talk with the families and talk with the students. No judgment, just looking at the data and saying, how do we create a plan? Where do you want to go with life? And how do we help you get there? And then they're there to help monitor and make sure that the students can be successful. Now, being able to do this work mm -hmm. uh, really is attributed to a federal grant that mm -hmm. uh, has been received. Tell me about the grant and how it's helping. Mm -hmm. Well, several years ago, we got a high school graduation initiative grant from the Department of Education. That's about $2 million over five years that allows us to build an infrastructure so that we can look at our data more carefully, as well as provide targeted um, support at certain schools that met certain federal criteria. So this grant's very important to even just to be able to do this work. If you didn't have the grant, you wouldn't be able to do it. Absolutely, and it gives us the opportunity to um, look at piloting programs that we know nationally have a lot of evidence that are successful, um, but we haven't tried them out here in the district to see if it does work for our students. Stay in School Counselors is one of those programs. They are putting in the Check and Connect program, which we know has got a lot of evidence that it helps students succeed, and so we are piloting it here in our schools. So give me some more specifics about this federal grant and how it works and 
how it will help the kids. District-wide, we want to make sure that schools and school staff have the data they need to support students, including risk factors such as homelessness and protective factors such as counseling services or community support. The grant also provides opportunities for our targeted schools to review that data and, and put in place some additional supports through mini-grants to each one of our schools. And for those students who have had difficulties in middle school, we're also providing some 8th and 9th grade transition programs for those students. We've got truancy reduction programs such as what you saw with Kelsey. We've got additional outreach and flexible dropout recovery services programs such as the online academy. And we've also got increased opportunities to have community engagement with our minority and our limited English speaking families online world these days. Yeah. Everybody uses it, yeah. uh, social media in so many different ways. But the, but the internet and the fact that it is giving so many mm -hmm. options, how is it uh, working in, in trying to keep kids in school mm -hmm. and connected to school? Oh, well, part of the grant has allowed us to uh, develop and work with a company that does an online uh, program for our students, and it has been fabulous. We have had a lot of students who um, have wanted to come back to school, didn't feel like a comprehensive high school was a place that they could be, um, and so we have brought them into our interagency programs, and they are working with teachers um, on the online academy, which is certificated teachers providing courses, and we're seeing a real increase in graduation. You know, it seems to me that uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all type of approach here, that you have to be very agile and flexible mm -hmm. uh, to be able to reach the kids, mm -hmm. and I suppose this grant is helping you do that. But, but just the approach within mm -hmm. the school district of being an open-minded effort mm -hmm. to try to mm -hmm. reach the kids. Absolutely, and it starts with the relationships that we can develop with the students because they need to trust us and want to come back and want to succeed. And we know that every student can succeed, we, and we're committed to providing those programs that will help all of our students succeed in the district. There's a, demograph a demographic shift in the country these days, and we saw it in the last election, and uh, you know, a large uh, growing Latino population, mm -hmm. particularly here in the mm -hmm. state of Washington, the Asian mm -hmm. population, mm -hmm. all the different uh, uh, ethnic groups within the school district, which probably puts more pressure mm -hmm. to try to reach these young people. Um, talk about that effort and uh, how important it is these days when you have that changing uh, dem demographic in the school district. Well, and I think that's about how do we connect with our students and our families to make sure that they feel like the school setting is a place that they can succeed in. And for instance, this high school grant, one of the uh, things that our, our students and families asked for was increase in, in nursing services at some of our schools because part of the reason that our students weren't being successful was because they and their families actually needed to have more health intervention and health support. Um, so we're trying to look for creative ways that that meet the needs of what their families are asking for. So the grant is helpful right now, but what happens when it goes away? Well, and that's where we have to evaluate all of our programs, and if in fact we find that they are successful with the district, then um, we need to figure out how we're going to sustain these programs. And that's a challenge for all of us in the reducing, uh, reduced budgets that we see out there. But we are committed to doing everything that we can to make sure that every student does succeed, because we know they can do it with our help. So it has to be a long-term approach. It has to be. We're in here for the long haul. Thank you, Peggy McAvoy, for a lot of great information and insights into what's being done here to try to keep these kids into school. It's pretty clear that students who get the right kind of targeted support can succeed. Here's one inspiring young man. 